There's a light in the sky Rising in the air There's a feeling so strong It's time to light the fire Like a branch on the Hello, welcome to the House of Wellness. I'm Luke Darcy and it is great to be joined, as always, by Joe Stanley, Rachel Finch and Luke Hines. Hi. Hines. Hello, G'day, guys. Bam, bam. Hello. And right off the top, our tech guru, Vanessa Toholka, joins us as well. Welcome to you, Vanessa. Thank you. Now, Vanessa, in a moment, you're going to tell us a bit about something that impacts millions of people worldwide. But first, I want to talk about something that's very close to all of us. During the week, uh, Joe, the World Health Organisation released their first ever guidelines for kids and screen time. Joe, it's a subject that we've had a few discussions about in the past, but it's an important one to all of us. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I love that the World Health Organisation has weighed in on this because as parents, we know that it's not healthy for our kids to be on the screen, but the endless fights to keep them off it is exhausting. And I'm telling you, quoting the World Health Organisation to my 10-year-old is not going to help me. <laughs> I need them Good in the room. Good luck with that, Joe. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It's all part of a broader guideline on physical activity, sedentary behaviour and sleep in kids under five. Mm -hmm. And incredibly, kids under two should have no screen time at all and those aged between two and five should be limited to no more than one hour of screen time a day. Rach, as a mum, how does that one sit with you? I think I get the world's worst parent award over oh. here. Honestly, I feel my house is pretty well balanced. I feel my, my children are really healthy and they definitely don't spend that much time. They spend a lot more on their technology right. and their devices. And how old are they? So I've got Dom, who's two, and right. I've got Violet, who's five. And they probably spend about two hours each on screens in the day, even my two-year-old. It's so challenging. But you know what I find really frustrating when I see a mother or a father or whoever is caring for the child handing a screen to a young, like, you know, a one-year-old instead of a book Mm. You know, when I had... I, I just feel like you take books with you everywhere and even if they can't read, they can flick through and that's so much more engaging. Hey, Joe, so I, I think us adults don't get off the hook on that basis as well. I was introduced to Screen Time the other day, which oh, uh, monitors oh, the, the use of <laughs> your own phone. Yeah. And I think I don't uh, overdo the phone. And I'm fighting with my kids every day who are turning 16 and 14 mm. saying, get off your phones, <laughs> enough. And then I looked on Saturday, just gone... I picked up my phone 166 times wow. in a day. You're addicted. Mm. I've got an issue. <laughs> I, I, I was two hours I spent Doing on Saturday what? on Picking email. I was flying. I was sort of sending something. I've got no idea. <laughs> it is confronting, isn't it, when you work yeah. out how much time. Now, Heinzy, I asked Sorry, you... guys. What are you going on about? <laughs> I have no idea where this conversation is going. Your phone is, is your life. <laughs> how many hours a day are you on your phone? I just took a look and it's eight hours a day of activity on the phone. But wow. I guess a lot of this is work these days. I'm doing emails, I'm creating content, photos, videos and so much more. But where do we draw the line? And also, what type of example are we leading? It's true. And I think role modelling is so important as parents and they don't know that there's the difference between work on the phone and play mm. on the phone. They just yep. see you looking at a screen. I think it's up to us to dictate those boundaries and set those and, and set periods of mummy's working for, for three to four hours from nine till 12 or nine till one and then I'm going to have a break. We're going to take them to the park. We're going to get some green time, balancing that screen and green time mm. and then getting back into it. Do the kids understand, do you think? Well, it depends mm. on age. I feel I've got a pretty good understanding with Violet. I say to her, she's five, and I say, Mummy's working, this is what we do. We, we have an online business. Mm. And you just do the best that you can. Well, I thought I was in the category where I wasn't overdoing it, but I've got to reassess uh, a little <laughs> bit of that. But maybe I'm in the minority, Vanessa. You're our expert on this. What do you make of it all? Look, medical professionals have had a hard time determining because we're all like navigating this to, you know, it's, it's fresh for us. Uh, but it's great to have some standards from the World Health Organization. We know that lots of tech founders from Silicon Valley for years have been saying that they were cautious about putting their kids in front of devices. Steve Jobs famously wouldn't let his three-year-old in front of an iPad and said, no, I think it's too soon. We don't know what the effects might be. Wow. There are other people in Silicon Valley, like Jason Toff, who created Vine and now works yeah. at Google. He says, how is it any different from a book? I think it's oh. fine. You know, we don't 
don't uh. know that this is a problem. And there's a real difference between just screens and actually social media and addictive mm. little patterns. So I think we can draw some lines there, but let's err on the side of caution. We've got these new guidelines. Let's give them a go and, uh, and try and be really virtuous. You can't amputate them from technology because <laughs> that is their future ultimately. For me, it's about monitoring exactly what they're watching and making sure we're balancing that time. But I, I am completely across what Violet is watching and what Dominic's watching, mm. and they know their boundaries with tech. Well, well let's uh, move on maybe to the solution part of it, uh, Vanessa. That's the challenge. But mm. there are some positive uh, apps, and uh, I'm a big fan of meditation. You've been exploring uh, that side of uh, use on your phone. Can you give us some, uh, some positive solutions? Look, I'm a massive fan of meditation as well, and there's a really interesting phenomena out there on the internet. It's gone viral a few times over the years, once in 2010, another time last year. It's called ASMR. Have any of you heard of it? I no. have. What does it stand for again? So it's Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Yes. It sounds very technical. Yeah. What Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. So it's, it's that weird tingle that you get down from your spine, the top of your head down your spine when you hear a pleasant sound. Is That's that right? Exactly but it's different it. for everyone. It is. So it could be triggered by a sound or by some visuals. Mm. Um, all sorts of things that seem quite normal. It might be the sound of rain falling, um, but it's a very specific physical response. And and what it is, it can bring us into a state of relaxation that can help us cope with this high stress, high tech world that we're in. It can be seen as a bit of an antidote to the wow. amount of technology we're surrounded by. So people have done videos of themselves whispering and and crackling paper, <laughs> brushing hair, well, and, popping and, and those so bubbles millions in of plastic. People. <laughs> Okay, millions of people watch this. It is a viral sensation on YouTube. Wow. There, are, there are ASMR artists and they're hugely popular. It's a massive industry. Another Turkish delight. Definitely. One of my favourite flavours. about you guys but I'm <laughs> fairly weirded out by all that. Uh, that is, is, is that supposed to be relaxing is it? I think for some people it is. Apparently it can be a learned response and people dealing with anxiety, insomnia, oh, you know, no. those sort of things I need can a shower. Kind of really helpful. <laughs> I need a shower. It feels like the wow. fingernails being run down a blackboard for me uh, Rach. I, I've yeah. I, I don't find that pleasurable at all. <laughs> I think I, I can get it though. I can get those heightened senses yep. can, can trigger something for people. For me, the only time that I would get that tingly sensation that we're talking about is during a massage. Okay. Or acupuncture at some point. It's a touch when my husband whispers in my ear. Oh, hello. But okay. that's pretty much. That's kind of it's different, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that's another secret, Rachel. Right? Sorry. Right. Let's Keep come back to that in the House of Wellness another time. Yeah. I think also beyond <laughs> touch, uh, for me, if I make it just uh, about audio, rain uh, on a hot tin roof. No, rain <laughs> on a tin roof uh, is very therapeutic. ASMR is going gangbusters around the world, apparently, Vanessa. So I want to find out a bit more about it. <laughs> After the break, we'll meet an Australian YouTube star whose videos are massive in this space. That's coming up on the House of Wellness. Welcome back. Before the break, we learned about an online relaxation therapy that has been taking off around the world. It's called ASMR, or Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Joe, it's got me intrigued. <laughs> and here to tell us a bit more about it is a leading practitioner in the art and YouTube sensation, Dimitri Smith. Welcome to you, Dimitri. Thank you. Total million people have uh, viewed your online uh, videos. How did you get into it? Um, I got into it just by wanting to create um, a few massage videos because that's something that I really like doing. And um, it sort of snowballed from there just by not wanting to talk on camera to whispering and then talking and then setting up a, my own recording studio to create content. Can you just give us a brief explanation? What is ASMR? Well, ASMR is a, it's a tingling sensation peel. I, they feel from the scalp and it goes down their back 
and it's it's a very pleasurable experience. For those mm. that are still confused, Joe, and they'll mind them, yeah. uh, <laughs> let's just uh, take a quick look at this. To me, than opening a chocolate egg. That I find yeah. relaxing. Yeah. Yes. It's, so yes. You do lots of different things mm -hmm. there. What are your most popular videos? I think Is the it most. The eggs? <laughs> no, no. It's it's just generally talking and just the the voice. People like the hand movements because the hand movements is sort of you know moving onto something that's unseen, and it's it's mostly the voice. So it's not necessarily sound or vision. It's a combination. It's it's very much a combination of different things. Everybody looks for something different in the video. So when you're trying to do different things, you're, you're touching onto different people's um, triggers. It's what they're looking for that mm. starts the sensation of ASMR. Okay, and is it about relaxation or is there some kind of higher purpose to this? Are you hypnotising people? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I am making them feel very, very good. Which is great. Yes. Dimitri, what about the science behind it? Is there, is it for everyone? Well, there has been a little bit of research into it, but there's nothing definitive on it. Um, I believe that it's activating um, the relaxation part of your nervous system called the parasympathetic nervous system. And it's releasing things like endorphins and serotonin out of your brain and straight down your nervous system. So I can get mum onto it? Or can, <laughs> can everyone experience this? I believe everyone can experience it, but it's difficult for people to experience it the first time. All right, I've got to ask, where do you get your ideas from? And do people ever get in touch and give you any weird or odd re requests or uh, a oh, bit kinky course. even? No. Um, get a bit, uh... well, I, I don't get much of that, but there's lots of different requests, but people give me ideas and I'll try and build upon that idea and create a video around it. Okay. Um, but most of my videos come from my real world experiences of what of experience in the real world that I've felt ASMR from, so I try and replicate that. Mm. Okay. okay, so millions of people worldwide engage with this. Do you feel like people are doing that because they are looking for something that takes them out of this high-tech environment? Is that what we're reaching out for? It's, it's a combination. I think it's because it comes down to that nervous system. We're living in the the, the stress nervous system ah. and so the ASMR activates the relaxation nervous system so people are too stressed and ASMR just helps them to relax so it's a it's a relaxation aid it's a tool that you can use to help relax. I know people that can't go to sleep without it like it's that it's they rely on it so much to switch mm. off so that explain that to them. so they watch internal... one of those videos before they go to bed? I think or it's like, an oral you, thing too. You have to wear earphones to it's, it's best to wear earphones, but you can still listen to it, just the sounds in the background, like listening to rain when you're going to sleep. But how is it different to someone talking to you in a really soothing way, like when we call our mum and have a really calm phone call? Mm. How does this vary? It's very similar, but it's, it's those little triggers that you pick up on, the tone, the, the pacing of the voice and the yeah. slowing down yeah. of it. And you pick up on those little things and then your neurons and your brain start going, hey, that's, that's, that's going to get me ASMR. And you, you try and absorb it in and then you start feeling the ASMR and just sometimes. I feel like it's very similar to mindfulness too, which is all about noticing the very intricate sounds that you're hearing, which switches off that internal mm. voice that constantly, you know, we churn and we can't the sleep chatter. because of mm. the chatter, right? So if you engage with that sound of maybe it's the rain or... Chip packets, not so much for me. That <laughs> kind of suits me nuts. But is it a similar thing where you're just being able to focus on that one thing that shuts out everything else? It does help. It, 
it helps just to balance the mind. So a lot of people use it for study. They'll listen to the quiet sounds in the background yeah. and it helps them to focus longer. Many, many messages people have said, I've helped them get them through university. Wow. And I've said, I've seen the phenomenal setup that you've got in your studio. You've got like three or four microphones so that you can really capture whatever you're doing there at a heightened. Yeah, so I've built a soundproof room. So because the sounds are so quiet, it's difficult yeah. to record them. So I built a room years ago and I have a, a, a decent like recording setup. So Dimitri, you are changing people's lives. In some, I have had some messages that have brought me to tears, yes. Oh. What, like what sorts of things? Well, I wouldn't say it on camera, but you know, people are in certain situations, but I've had uh, emergency surgeons, police officers, firefighters, military veterans, uh, lots of students use it. People are, are in stressful situations. It's a bit wow. like Dimitri, you just did uh, say that on, on camera. <laughs> uh, we appreciate, uh, appreciate you sharing that. I'm into meditation, always uh, keen to expand the mind a little bit more, and uh, thanks for uh, sharing that with us today. really appreciate it. Welcome back. Today we're focusing on the mind and in particular the latest high-tech ways to relax, relieve anxiety and get rid of insomnia. Before the break, it was all about whispering, scratching, even brushing your way to better sleep, Joe. I found that a yeah. little bit weird, I'll be honest with you. But uh, <laughs> Vanessa, she's here to tell us about uh, the whole high-tech way of uh, relaxation and the ASMR thing. What did you think of that? Look, it's not something I've experienced. I find it a little hard to understand, but I'm always willing to listen. And the stats don't lie. These videos are so popular, it's uh, really working for a lot of people. So if you wanted to find out if it could work for you, a great place to start would be at a website called ASMR ION, so I-O-N. Okay. You can go there and you can try a whole vast array of videos and see is this working for you? Mm. You know, are you a rain on the tin roof person? Are you a hairbrushing person? Or, you know, is, is it not, is it, you know? Any other apps in this space that you could recommend? There are a lot. So if you're on an Apple phone, then you could hop on ASMR Silk. Now that has customised noises, so you mm. can blend and mix your own range wow. of sounds that work for you. Because the interesting thing is that Dimitri was speaking about how he seeks out his own ASMR. So it seems that you have your own very specific very needs niche. and then you've got to find yours that, mm. you know, that matches, aligns with what you're and after. And maybe that's to do with the sorts of stresses that you have in your life. You don't want anything that's going to remind you of stressful things. Oh, good point. Yeah, so you want a bit of oral escapism, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. Just, Any others? Yeah, if you haven't got an iPhone, there's an app for ISO and Android mm -hmm. and it's called Simply Normal. Now, this is for some, those of us who don't experience ASMR as well as those who do, mm. because you could just use sounds for relaxation, right? Oh, like the ocean. It's a lot more friendly. Yes. It's ocean, it's leaves rustling in the wind. I like a, a bit of white noise. Brook. The fan going is good. In fan? The fan going even when it's free. Too much time in Bali for you. <laughs> <laughs> this will let you mix pink, white noise, okay. and it's perfect for if you're trying things to get the kids to sleep. You'll try anything. Mm. Simply noise is worth trying. Yeah. Thank you, Vanessa. Really appreciate all that. Hey, staying on the subject of sleep, our man behind the health bar, Gerald Quigley, has a great natural remedy to help us get a good night's sleep. Uh, Gerald, how are you? I'm well, Dust, thank you. And we're going to talk about uh, a naturally occurring hormone we have in our body. It's called melatonin. That's released by the pineal gland and it really regulates the time within our system that we're going to rest and go to sleep and then we're going to wake up. And that's our cicada rhythm, yeah? True, Heinzi, that's the case. So this is an internally synchronised clock that works 24 hours a day and it just helps us through our cycles of rest and wakefulness. So people who are shift workers or insomniacs or people maybe like you who stay up watching reruns of my segments, <laughs> that's why their system goes out of whack? Yes, they actually put me to sleep, but it's OK. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the idea of uh, melatonin is that it actually restructures our sleep and wake cycle. So as it gets darker, our melatonin levels rise, and as it gets lighter, our melatonin levels drop away. So it's a, now we all have this, animals have it, plants have it. So it's something that's internalised and it just happens. 
Now, Rachel, I know you're a really big fan of blocking out blue light <laughs> after a certain time. Tell us more yeah, about that. Yeah, I do put my blue blockers on, so they help block the blue-violet light from technology and devices. So I put them on in the evening or towards the end of the day um, because, as we know, the blue and the green light or the violet light from devices can actually neutralise melatonin's effects. Yes, Joe. What, what are blue blockers, though? Like, so are they sunglasses? What are they? They're exactly <laughs> like the glasses you're oh, wearing, okay. but with a, a specific lens that help block that specific light um, shade, that so wavelength. You, you put them on, Rach, leading up to going to bed. You don't wear them when you're asleep. No, leading up to going to bed if I'm on my device, you know, 8 o'clock sitting on the couch or when I'm flying or I'm in an area that's really overexposed with artificial light. Mm. So we're looking here, though, as you said, and why would you be on a device last thing at night? Because it's telling your brain, hello, it's, it's daytime because it's so bright. So for shift workers, for people on uh, long leg flights, it's perfect. And often older people, their levels of melatonin start to drop away. We don't produce melatonin as effectively. So that's probably where a melatonin supplement can help. But how does using melatonin differ from using a sleeping pill, for example? Well, a sleeping pill is often a synthetic way of dulling sensations, whereas melatonin tends to gently encourage a restoration. I think one of the differences is with melatonin, you don't find there's a dependence on it, you don't find there's a reduced effectiveness over time, and you also don't find a hangover effect that can sometimes happen with um, a prescribed medication. But in all of these things, you check with your healthcare practitioner rather than just go off and buy it and use it, always check first. The A to Z of vitamins is brought to you by Biogland Vitamins. Discover the Biogland difference and improve your health today. Uh, welcome back. Well, last week, uh, Gerald was fired up and gave us some great insight into his thoughts surrounding the recent changes into private health insurance with a number of natural therapies and remedies removed from private health cover, Heinz. Mate, it's actually created a bit of furor to us. Uh, during the week, I caught up with former head of the Australian Medical Association turned Sydney Polly, Dr Karen Phelps, who's also weighed in on the debate. I had a health crisis a number of years ago and the way I got back to total health and well-being was to combine a whole range of different types of healthcare modalities so that I could get myself back to 100%. I felt like I got to about 80-85% but that wasn't good enough for me. Dr Karen Phelps has had first-hand experience of the benefits of complementary medicines. For her, it's all about a holistic approach pulling together different types of treatments tailor-made to fit each stage of our health journey. I'm interested in what works for people where there's particularly evidence-based treatments that will work for a particular condition. Now, one example I'll give you is low back pain. Now, in the United Kingdom, under the NHS, first-line treatments for low back pain include Tai Chi and yoga. Uh, now, that's something that I would offer to patients who present with chronic low back pain and say, well, let's look at some different exercise options. Let's see if yoga suits you, if Tai Chi suits you. Maybe acupuncture will be helpful for you. Uh, I also have a lot of people who cannot or do not want to take pharmaceutical medications and then they say, what else can I do? These are the things that you can talk with people and to be able to offer those, those particular options for them. Could you outline your understanding of the proposed changes to private health insurance? What they involve is a banning of 16 different complementary medicine modalities from cover under private health insurance. And that means that for people who wanted to have cover for things like naturopathy or Pilates or yoga, Tai Chi, etc., and a whole range of, of uh, modalities, can no longer purchase private health insurance for those particular treatments. The problem is that 16 different modalities were all put in this list and the excuse that was given was that there was no evidence for those treatments and that is patently wrong because I've looked for the evidence and I've found the evidence. I've written a textbook about integrative general practice. So what shocked me was that the fundamental basis for this decision was based on a flawed premise, that is there is no evidence that particular therapies work. While Dr Karen acknowledges that a number of the modalities on the list don't satisfy the basis for evidence, there are some that do. And these, she believes, should be restored to private health insurance rebates. The problem is that if you take away from complementary therapies that do actually work, 
and I mentioned yoga and Tai Chi as examples that work for people with chronic low back pain. Then people are then dependent on painkillers, on surgery, they're more likely to have um, more imaging like MRI scans and CT scans, that young and healthy people who are seeing some benefit from their private health insurance are likely to drop out of health insurance and then they're on the public system and so there are all sorts of unintended consequences. We're not going to be saving the money the government thinks that they're going to save through this measure. You're a critic of these changes and you've actually requested an overturn on the rebate for some of these therapies. I've asked for a reconsideration of some of the modalities on this list and in particular I've asked for yoga, tai chi, pilates, western herbal medicine and naturopathy to be removed from this banned list because I believe that there is sufficient evidence for those modalities and for those treatments for them to continue to get private health insurance rebates. What effect will their removal have on providers for example? I think if we deprofessionalise some of these health professions, that's not the direction we want to go. We want to be able to work with practitioners of yoga, practitioners of natural therapies, practitioners of Western herbal medicine, so that we have a better understanding of, for example, how herbal medicines work in with uh, pharmaceutical medicines or how forms of exercise can help to reduce the need for surgery or for painkillers, that sort of thing. Now, the backlash has been huge. I believe this may have sparked a review. The backlash has been huge <laughs> and I'm pleased to say that the Health Minister, just before the election was announced, has said that there will be a review of this decision and I welcome that. And this review must include experts and academics in complementary medicine so that the, uh, the review panel knows where the evidence is, where to find it and how to incorporate that into the, the political decisions. Around 80% of Aussies use natural medicines and treatments, so this affects a lot of people. Yeah, and things like Reiki, and compared to something like yoga or Tai Chi, mm. it's so niche, you know, surely it's not right that all of these things are bundled together. Yes, and the other thing that really angers me is that premiums have increased by 66% in the last decade, which is way more than the rate of inflation, yet the rebate amount seems to be getting less and less. So the health insurance company Companies are not even looking after the people that are their members on any level. Yeah, it's, it's a very huge, huge uh, issue, this one. And uh, yeah. to suggest that yoga isn't evidence based is just outrageous and ridiculous. And just some of these treatments now, as part of integrated medicine, absolutely make sense in every way. Jared, I know you're very fired up about this. You've uh, done a lot, of, uh, a lot of homework. Are you seeing any change? Well, I'm still seeing, as Dr. Phelps said, Das, a lot of. Um, uh, furor, a lot of anger from people who have relied on these modalities for a while. Um, I'm thrilled that, that really from our uh, discussions a couple of weeks ago, we're all on the same page, which is terrific. And Dr Phelps, I'm happy to be on that panel. Just give me a call. <laughs> GQ, I do know that there is lots of evidence for, sure. for so many of these modalities that it's been dismissed. How could that be? And what's interesting, Joe, you can't just dismiss something like yoga that's been around for thousands of years and you can't suddenly say, well, no, it doesn't work. And yet, as Dr Phelps explained, it is one of the recommended treatments to keep, keep people away from opioids, which are, are really a massive problem in Australia. And this essentially has been pushed away, saying there's no evidence. Just rubbish. Hey, I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot more about this, Joe. I know you're ready to jump in with a bit more, but uh, in the coming weeks, we'll be back onto that topic. After the break, we'll scratch the surface on one of the most common skin conditions in the world. Stick around. That's coming up on the House of Wellness. Today, we're turning up the volume on the classic chicken schnitzel by adding turmeric, coconut and ginger to the crunchy crumb mix and giving this classic meal a boost of powerful antioxidants. Let's start with the crunchy crumbs. We're adding shredded coconut to wholemeal breadcrumbs along with fresh grated ginger and turmeric. Biogland turmeric powder is high in curcumin a potent anti-inflammatory and strong antioxidant that may help prevent heart disease and cancer. Dip each chicken breast in beaten eggs and coat with the crumbs, patting gently to help them stick. Cook gently in coconut oil till browned and crunchy. Serve with a squeeze of lemon, then dig in and enjoy my turmeric, coconut and ginger crusted chicken.
Welcome back. Now, we all know what it's like to scratch an itch that just won't go away. Imagine living with that 24-7 with little or no relief and with that itch covering over 10% of your body. Well, that's what it's like living with extreme psoriasis, mm, right? absolutely awful. Mm. My best friend is a nurse and she's seen mild and severe cases of this. Red patches that can come anywhere on the body that just itch and burn constantly. Yes, in fact, this week I was reading about a new drug that helps reduce swelling and tenderness in a particular psoriasis called psoriatic arthritis. That's the thing, there's lots of different kinds of psoriasis. Mm. And it goes way beyond the skin into the joints and it's just been put on the PBS much to the relief of people who suffer that chronic pain as it was a very expensive drug to trial. But for the more common condition, the inflammatory skin flare-ups that cause those red flaky patches that you mentioned, Rach. Well, it affects around around 1.6 million Australians mm. of all ages. I've been living with psoriasis for over 38 years now. The psoriasis I suffer from is plaque psoriasis. It's very scaly kind of psoriasis. You get it anywhere. Basically, it's just spots and then they combine together and expand. So they're big patches on your skin. The moment the season changes, they flare up. I have it all over my face. I have it on my arms, my legs, um, my body, my behind, genitals, everywhere. It gets a bit red and scaly, especially when you're stressed, flares up. End of the day, when you take your clothes off, it gets itchy. So you need to keep it lubricated with the medication and all. If you don't moisture it, it just gets all dry. When I was growing up, I could never wear short sleeves. I could never wear short dresses because I was petrified. People will ask me what happened. It's not a good looking disease at all. It's straight in your face. So I decided to cover myself. It's now from last probably three, four years, I've started to come out of it with more awareness of psoriasis. So I thought, okay, my body, I can decide. So I can I'll wear now short dresses and people don't stop and ask me what I've got. Living with psoriasis is not easy. Definitely it's not easy. It's, it's a big challenge. Like I said, it's not a good looking disease. It's not a pimple which will go away. It's not a throat infection. After a couple of days you can't take a medication, antibiotic, it's gone. No, it's not like that. It's something which you have to live with it. For me, it took me a lot of years to believe that, okay, yes, it's there, I have to live with it. Okay, I have psoriasis, but you don't win. I will win because I am positive. If you are there, that's fine. It's nothing's gonna change, it's just your attitude towards it. So, yes, I feel quite proud having it because I'm different from like 10 people sitting in the room, I'm different. What a beautiful story with Deep Tea there. She is so inspiring because we can see with her how debilitating psoriasis can be. And it's not just a physical thing, Rach. It mm. can bring on anxiety and self-consciousness and, you know, there's no cure. And do you know what? I've been with my husband 20 years, beautiful Daz. I met him 20 years ago and he had head to toe psoriasis wow. at the time. And it really shaped the start of our relationship because I knew that he was so self-conscious and it's something I've seen him manage over his whole life. He's had it since he was a kid. Mm. And it is debilitating. It's not just a rash or a skin condition. However, it can be managed with medicine and other prescribed treatments. And to tell us more, welcome Rachel McAdam from CeraVe. Thank you. Rachel, psoriasis is caused by so many different triggers. How can sufferers manage those triggers? Sure, so although it has a genetic underlying cause, it can be managed you know, by identifying those triggers. And one of the biggest ones is stress. So keeping a well-balanced diet, exercising regularly can help. Also avoiding smoking, avoiding alcohol, and looking after the condition of the skin as and well. Talking about the skin, keeping it well moisturised, I would imagine, can help things like psoriasis and eczema. Absolutely, so keeping the skin well moisturised and avoiding damage to the skin such as sunburn can help um, because psoriasis and eczema are both impacted well the skin barrier function is impacted in both of those conditions and that means the skin is more prone to dryness and itchiness and irritation so like you said by keeping the skin well moisturized it will certainly help. And Gerald, over there, you are our expert pharmacist. <laughs> what do you recommend around natural remedies for this sort of condition? It's a very complete package of things, uh, Joe. And dermatologists often, Rachel, prescribe moisturisers containing ceramides. Mm. Now, what are they and are there different mm. types? 
Sure. So we're finally seeing formulations that can deliver these essential ceramides to the skin. And that's important because we've known for some time now that ceramides um, are deficient in certain skin diseases. And um, back to you know what they are, they're actually lipids and they naturally exist within the skin. They make up about half of the substance that acts as the glue between the skin cells on the top layer of skin. And this is essentially the skin's barrier function. And its job is to keep you know moisture locked into the skin and prevent you know environmental factors and irritants from entering the skin. So if we've got ceramides in our skin already, yeah. what's the point in, in putting more in? Yeah, good question. So not everyone makes the right amount of ceramides, just naturally. Other people are exposed to environmental factors that can interfere with their skin barrier function. So yeah, there can be a need to, to apply moisturisers to compensate. So then how often should we put, be putting it on and how long will they last? Sure, so CeraVe, this brand here, can be applied only once a day because it is formulated to progressively release these lipids and hydrating factors. And that can be really useful for people that struggle to apply their moisturisers multiple times a day. Mm. So Rach, um, I, I love to hear that there is relief. Yeah. but psoriasis itself is an autoimmune disease is it not like it's something that yeah. it, it's not just a reaction on the skin that's right so it's definitely driven by an autoimmune origin it's got an inflammatory process happening and the skin cells are just dividing too rapidly and that then interferes with with the skin in other ways so you get this scaly red angry you know presentation quite often and so what we're looking for here is a relief to the symptoms yeah we're doing our best to just at least keep the skin well moisturized so it doesn't then interfere even further with the itch and the inflammation. And I think what we saw there with deep tea as well is understanding that there should be no social stigma to it. That understanding that people mm. are living with this and living a full, happy, wonderful life. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much a for coming pleasure. in, Rachel. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Netflixing and chilling, a lot of stopwatch at the gym, a lot of selfies. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's a good balance of everything, but I, I, it's really going to make me aware. We didn't yeah. get on to you, Rach. How many hours a day are you on your phone? Last week I averaged <sighs> five hours and 20 minutes per day, which I was, I was quite surprised. Monday I had a, a blowout at eight hours. Oh, um, wow. But I was quite surprised because everything that we do for yeah. work is online. Yes. Jo? Yeah. Yeah. I'm two hours 53 on average, which I'm pretty happy with. I'm, I, but because I know that what app, I've do? really set what myself... What do you do all day? I, I, I sleep. Um, <laughs> I go shopping. No, no, I'm, I work on a screen, but it's a laptop and I'm writing yeah. columns and books and stuff, so, yeah. so you know, I can't do that on my phone. Different screen time. And then yeah. we got Luke Darcy who doesn't even have well, an Instagram account. Uh, apart from <laughs> the, but I picked up my phone last Saturday 190 times in the day. What, what? are you doing? So, I don't know like, what happened. Are you day. doing a thing? Are they, uh, is anyone texting me? No, no one's texting yeah. me. No, no one's texting me. No one's texting me. Do I, I have any friends? I have no is anyone, anyone out there? Anyone well, want to send me a message? Well, can I share something with you guys? Yeah. Because we've got our phones here, and while I do, I want to just share with you this amazing thing that's happening in May, which may help you with relaxation and stress relief and perhaps getting away from this sort of life and into something that's a little more helpful and healthy, like okay. meditation. Okay, yes. now you know that we're really passionate about this. It's called Mindful in May. Check mm -hmm. it out online. <laughs> <laughs> on, on your on your phone. <laughs> so, uh, mindfulinmay.org, and it's basically a campaign that allows you for one month to engage with experts in meditation, neuroscientists, meditation teachers, so that they challenge you to do 10 minutes a day, and hopefully by the end of May you will have established that habit and you've mastered meditation, because a lot of people say they can't do it. So and you, it, you can. You can. Yeah. Everyone yeah. can do it. So you yeah. learn from them first, and then you go off on your own. And That's do, right. Practice your 10 minutes. That's so you great. engage with this, and it's basically trying to transform our lives. Lives and bit by bit will transform the world. Well, we could all I just move that. in with you and lead and follow your example. Yeah, <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Mindful in May, Joe. Good on you. Today's been a lot about relaxation, great ways to relieve stress. But let's face it, no better way to do that than by heading to a tropical holiday at a yes. retreat. And I've got one in mind for all of us. So a bit close to home. We're offering two double passes for two couples to spend seven nights at the Sukhavati Retreat in Bali. You'll experience yoga, meditation, spa treatments, beautifully prepared food, your own personal wellness consultation as well. Oh. We need to take the whole team up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I've got to go. But uh, please uh, get online. You'll enjoy it. You'll be uh, pampered on the way there too, flying business class, courtesy of the team at Jetstar. It's the best way to get up to Bali. Thanks to Jetstar for that. Head to our website, houseofwellness.com.au for all the details on how to enter and good luck. That is our show for another week. If you want any more info, go to the website. Don't forget to tune into the House of Wellness radio show every Sunday. You hear Joe. Yes, yeah, I'm sometimes here. there. And Gerald. Yeah, yep. That'd be great. And as always, thanks, Gerald. Thanks to uh, Heinzy. Thanks to Rach. Thanks Thank to you. Joe. And to our good friends at Chemist Warehouse. See you next week. Oh, I can't, wait. can't wait to get on. I'm, I'm that is right now. Yeah.